question can you supplement enough minerals to stop ckd without having to avoid meat and also can you use astragalus to improve your kidney function and also what supplements are best to lower blood sugar levels this and more in today's video Catherine here, I'm a doctor of natural medicine and today I'll answer your questions. Guys, it's really been a while since the last time I made a proper Q&A video here on Double Okini and today I will finally answer all your most interesting questions. I also received a lot of interesting questions from you lately so let's get started immediately very first question is from aqua hits and they have made a very interesting point here i read the question would not proper vitamin and mineral supplementation help offset potential phosphorus issues in meat eaters so i recently made a video about protein intake in ckd patients and one of the points i made in the video is that Phosphorus is one of the worst toxins for the kidneys and of course phosphorus is present in large amount in meat and other protein sources. If you missed the video just keep in mind that high phosphate treats your kidneys like a piñata except the only surprise inside is more trouble. And in the video, I also mentioned how taking phosphate binders can really help decrease the absorption of this dangerous mineral in the intestine. So it was only natural to ask this question. I mean, if we can take phosphate binders and decrease phosphorus absorption, what's the need to avoid meat then? Can we just take, you know, more phosphate binders? And it will be awesome if that worked, but unfortunately, the amount of calcium carbonate or, you know, medications such as Sevelomer, you will need to take to bind to all the phosphorus you will get from eating meat regularly is too damn high. Correct. It's too damn high. And you know what happens when you take too high doses of mineral supplements or of medications in general? you get side effects. In the case of calcium carbonate, too high calcium levels are to be expected and that's not nice. And guys, trust me when I say that you don't want to empty a pill bottle each time you eat a meal. Unless, of course, you've always dream of turning taking pills into a competitive sport. And the gold medal for most supplements consumed in a single sitting goes to... Not you, I hope. In fact, in the case of Svelomer, side effects could be nausea, heartburn, constipation, stomach pain because you see, the higher the dose of a medication is, the more the risk of side effect increase, while the benefit decreases in proportion. So no, unfortunately, you can't take enough phosphate binders for meat to be still a viable food option. Not to mention that phosphorus is not the only way in which eating meat damages the kidneys. Meat also comes with tons of acid and protein and there is not removing protein from the intestine. I know it's a tough pill to swallow, pun intended, but hey, if we just were hamburgers, we'd all be at a BBQ, right? Up next, a question from a user called Juliet Kumi. Hi Catherine, you're doing a wonderful job for us. Please any supplement to lower blood sugar levels. I have insulin resistance, which sometimes spike my sugar levels. Thank you, Juliet. I really appreciate your nice words. Now, there are several supplements that are actually supported by science to help reduce sugar levels. My number one most recommended supplement here when it comes to diabetes is berberine. Berberine is amazing. Some people even call it nature's zempic. And that's maybe a bit of a stretch. Berberine is not that powerful. I consider it more like nature's metformin, which is absolutely nothing to sneeze at. I mean, metformin is a pretty powerful medicine and berberine acts in a very similar way and with very little side effects as well. I usually recommend taking it before meals because berberine also reduces appetite. Something else I often recommend is ALA or alpha lipoic acid. This is an antioxidant that is made naturally in the body and also found in foods. 
It is used to break down carbohydrates and to make energy. ALA helps lower blood sugar by promoting processes that can remove fat that has accumulated in muscle cells, which otherwise makes insulin less effective. This means this remedy will attack diabetes at its root. I also recommend apple cider vinegar and Ceylon cinnamon. These are also powerful and you can add both these things to your meals. I mean, they are not even supplements. Now, when it comes to fighting diabetes, something that helps as well is supplementing two minerals, chromium and magnesium. Chromium is an essential trace mineral that stabilizes and reduces blood sugar levels by improving insulin sensitivity. It is known that a deficiency in this mineral has similar symptoms to that of diabetes. Even more common is a magnesium deficiency. Trust me when I say you don't want to have to deal with that. Now, guys, if you have diabetes, don't even think about starting all these supplements all together. Always be careful. Always research the supplements you want to add and make informed decisions. This is especially important for chromium and magnesium since these minerals can also accumulate in some cases, causing problems and side effects. Up next, a question I received from a user called Angie Asnaran. In a short, I made about sodium bicarbonate. The question is, does it raise your blood pressure? So this user probably knows that sodium bicarbonate contains sodium. I mean, it's in the name, right? And they are worried that taking this supplement will raise their blood pressure. And it makes a lot of sense, right? So is your blood pressure going to raise if you are prescribed sodium bicarbonate? Well, the opposite is actually true. This is one of those rare times when adding sodium actually benefits you. In fact, I usually tell my patient to monitor their blood pressure when they start to take sodium bicarbonate because I expect it to go wait, wait, down. Wait. What? Why? Let me explain. Sodium bicarbonate is used to treat a complication of CKD called metabolic acidosis. This happens when there is too much acid in the blood, more than the kidneys can filter. And yeah, it's as bad as it sounds. It will cause a cascade of health issues including bone problems, high potassium levels, faster progression to dialysis, and more. I mean, it's acid right who would want their body to be overwhelmed by acid now with this grocery list of health disaster people don't usually pay too much attention to one of the lesser known problems metabolic acidosis causes elevated blood pressure this is why what i answered to the question can baking soda raise blood pressure is no as long as you take it in the right dose and you actually need it because of course there is always the risk of taking more sodium bicarbonate than you need and this would in turn pose the risk of raising blood pressure a question from a user called ideal stoic why should those patients on blood thinners be careful of NAC? My father is on blood thinners, aspilets, and apixaban, and the doctor has also prescribed him flumicil, which he takes every day. So, this was posted on a video about NAC, and I mentioned in the video that NAC may interact with blood thinners, all right? And yeah, this person's father was prescribed Flumicil, which is the same as NAC by their doctor, even if they are on blood thinners. Is that bad? Is this patient at risk for bleeding and other issues? Well, this particular patient was prescribed aspilets, which is low-dose aspirin, and apixaban, which is a direct oral anticoagulant. So two different blood thinners, plus he was also given NAC, which is known to have mild antiplatelet effects, which could increase the risk of bleeding. By the way, the risk of interactions with blood thinners is much bigger if warfarin is being taken. But yeah, of course, taking three different medications that can cause coagulation to slow down might have side effects. But that doesn't mean these side effects are always going to happen. Just that 
there is the need to be careful. For example, a patient taking two blood thinners plus supplements should notice if they have signs of excessive bleeding, easy bruising, prolonged bleeding from cuts, frequent or severe nosebleeds and bleeding gums are all signs that the blood doesn't coagulate fast enough. This is a problem that would require medical attention. Again, it's not necessarily going to happen, but it's worth knowing about this risk. And by the way, guys, a lot of supplements may increase the effect of blood thinners, even stuff that is super common such as omega 3s garlic, CoQ10 and more. And this is why you always consult your doctor and get informed before taking supplements. Or you could ask me directly. This is another question I got recently. How do I contact you for a diet plan? Okay, this is an easy one. Just send me an email to katherine at newhopeforkidneypatients.com. There is also a link in the description of the video. And guys, as some of you already know, I'm taking patients for video consultation now. And the great news is that I'm having amazing results with some of you that are trying my innovative approach to the renal diet. This is a dietary plan that I'm including in the price of the first consultation and that I will personalize for each one of you that request it. But you know what's truly astounding? It's you. You are extraordinary. I never imagined that helping patients embark on a new dietary journey could be so rewarding and, dare I say, easy. Usually, when the word diet comes up, people kick scream and cling to old habits for dear life but not you guys i've met several patients that contacted me from this channel that were absolutely ready to set up ready to make sacrifices ready to trade fleeting pleasures for lasting health you are true warriors you're unafraid to give up certain foods in exchange for the priceless gift of improved kidney function. That's why I'm freeing up more of my time to offer counseling to even more of you in the coming weeks. So don't hesitate. Reach out to me. Some say nothing beats that first bite of a donut. But you know what's even sweeter? getting a thumbs up from your nephrologist and not seeing that look of mild panic in their eyes. Okay, up next, one more question from Aqua Hits. Okay, he really likes me. He asks, Catherine, my goddess. Oh, thank you. You are too kind. One question, does astragalus increase GFR? Also, can you take it with cordyceps? So, to answer the second part of this question, yes, astragalus and cordyceps can be taken together, no problem. Just try to take astragalus with a meal and cordyceps on an empty stomach for better absorption. But does this remedy increase your GFR? Well, of course, this is a complicated question because you see, astragalus is a powerful remedy and it's also probably one of the most studied herbal supplements for kidney health. So what does science say about it? Well, there is one meta-analysis in particular we should take a look at, the one published in the Cochrane Library. They examined 22 studies that involved 1,323 participants and that's really a lot. What they found out is incredible. On average, taking astragalus decreased serum creatinine levels by 21%. 0.39 millimoles per liter as we can see and yeah that's a lot that's very significant and it's not even the main benefit of this supplement in fact improvements in proteinuria hemoglobin and serum albumin levels are even more significant but does that mean that you take astragalus and boom, your kidney function improves? Well, things are usually more complicated than that. In fact, the way I use this remedy is as a part of a broader treatment strategy. Because the way I see it, supplements are just the icing on the cake of a treatment plan that works. So have I had good results with patients taking astragalus? Yes. Were these patients only taking astragalus? No, they were also following a diet and receiving the appropriate medical treatment. And since I mentioned the diet, here's a question about it. Is this diet safe for CKD and diabetes type 2? Okay guys, as I was saying, one of the main weapons we have against CKD progression is the renal diet, the low protein plant-based diet to be more specific. And what this user wants 
to know is if this particular diet is actually safe for those suffering from type 2 diabetes. Because of course, planning a diet that works for both diabetes and CKD is not easy nor straightforward. In fact, someone who needs to improve their blood sugar levels would be usually started on a diet with less carbs and more protein, all right? That's a common recommendation for people with diabetes. And yes, of course, if you have diabetes, you cut a bunch of carbs from your diet and you are on the road to weight loss, which is what type 2 diabetes really needs if you want to improve. But what if you also have CKD? Now, this is where things get messy. In fact, putting together a diet that works for both diabetes and CKD is not the easiest of tasks. But you see, there is a way, which is getting a professional to design a personalized diet for each patient and then to follow up this treatment regularly. This is what I do for my patients and this is how I get the results. So when it comes to diabetes, instead of focusing on removing carbs, I focus on removing high glycemic index carb foods. No, it's not the same. Eating a banana, for example, will never make your blood sugar levels raise as much as support portion of ice cream or white bread or a sugary beverage. So instead of reducing all carbs, what I do is removing those food items that are known to cause problems to people with diabetes. And at the same time, I also remove all those foods that cause problems to people with kidney disease. And guess what? Many of those foods are the same. This is why the info I give here on Double O Kidney is safe both for people with diabetes and for those with kidney disease. And guys, if you want to know more about the renal diet and the results you can get with it, my video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Ciao!